Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, Director of Nature Line School. For those that have been to our classes, you've probably heard me speak of this subject a number of times, but here we go. I've been talking about doing this for years and I'm just gonna crank it out today and see what happens. It is my opinion that if you know how to use a knife right, that you can take a normal dinner knife, case knife, peanut butter knife, butter knife, whatever you wanna call this, and make it work in a survival bushcraft situation. So we're gonna check it out today and see what happens. There's not much more of a debatable topic in survival backpacking bushcraft than knives. And that's why in my second book, Ultimate Wilderness Gear, I included a whole chapter on grinds, steels, handle material, sheath material, and points and anything and everything in between that relate to knives. So we're kind of going to throw that out the window today because what I want to show is that even a poor knife, something such as this, a case knife, peanut butter knife, whatever you want to call it, is going to be an incredibly useful tool if you know how to use it right. So what we have is a stainless steel 188 knife. What 188 refers to is the chromium and the nickel percentage that is in the stainless steel. And we're going to see if it matches up and can get the task done. What I want to show, I'm not sure that it can. I've never done this before. I've just had this theory for a long time. But what I do want to show is that even a poor knife can get some work done. If you have a better knife, you're going to be able to do so much more. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a baton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk off in the woods. We're going to find a field expedient baton, one that's just laying on the ground already. Then we're going to cut a poplar tree because they're real prominent here. There's a lot of them. We can cut one down. It won't be a problem. And then we'll make a good baton out of that and see what we can do with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some of these branches off so I can get in here and have good access to these poplar trees. There's a bunch here, so we're not gonna harm the environment by cutting a few. So the key to cutting any tree, if you're gonna do it with a knife, like a baton through it, is to bend it over and then wherever that bend is at 90 degrees, cut into there because that's where most of the tension lies. And it'll be much easier to cut. So what I'm going to do now is take our little poplar tree, find me a good log to sit on, and I'm going to cut me a baton out of this. So here's my little tree. And yeah, I'm, I'm aware that a baton's better when it's dry, but just to illustrate how this is a useful tool, we're going to go ahead and cut this green one. So, and that illustrates a point right there is that this field expedient baton that I picked up is so dry that it's uh, wanting to break apart, which won't happen with this other tool that we're making now. So I'll cut through this and then we'll have us a baton. Yeah, that's much better.
Now I got a real solid baton made from my butter knife. So now that we have the baton made, we'll walk over here. We're gonna baton some little stuff, some hardwood, and some other things. So what we have here are a bunch of rabbit sticks that we made for another class. Um, there's several different types of wood. That's something you should pay attention to when you're watching YouTube channels and TV and all that good stuff is what kind of wood are they cutting? Um, because some woods are really easy to cut. For example, an aspen, uh, maybe even a straight edge uh, poplar. Uh, this is poplar here. But for something like ironwood or dogwood, which are a couple of the hardest woods on the planet, uh, it's not gonna be an easy task and we'll see how this little butter knife handles it. First up, this is a piece of poplar and we'll just use this anvil right here made out of a, just a piece of two by six. One of the things to keep in mind, whenever you're batoning, go with the crack that you have. Don't go against it. There's gonna be natural formations of cracks in wood when you cut them like this with a chainsaw or a saw or what have you. Go with those and that'll help out tremendously. So with a straight grain poplar, that worked incredibly well. So this is hornbeam. Uh, some people refer to this as ironwood. There's actually a lot of trees that people refer to as ironwood. But uh, the reason they refer to it as ironwood is because it is one of the most dense woods um, that you can try to cut into. So this is going to be a real good test to see if it hurts the blade. Again, I'm going to focus my attention on a crack. I'm going to find a good crack and then I'm going to utilize that to try to baton. So that's your hornbeam. Uh, you can see how dense that wood is. It's still got a straight grain, which makes it easy to baton, but uh, it's incredibly hard. And our knife still holding up well. I want to point out again, I don't think I did this earlier, but I didn't do a thing to this to sharpen it when I got started. So here we go. This is what it's doing. So the last little thing we're going to baton is this piece of dogwood. If you're not familiar with dogwood, it's, it's probably one of the hardest woods out here. Uh, I actually made this into a baton that I utilized for a bushcraft class last year. So uh, that's why it looks like this. But let's see what it does to the dogwood. Again, trying to find a crack. If you look at this one, there's not many cracks there. So I'm just going to have at it and see what happens. So it followed the grain on that, uh, another dense wood. Let's just make another cut for the fun of it. And there you have it. Another hard wood there, dog wood, and our knife's doing well. Hey, so a lot of folks are aware of the emerald ash borer and how much it's devastating ash trees. Um, pretty interesting way all that works, a little bitty bug. But uh, ash trees are incredibly hard wood and that's what we have here. Um, this is some of the wood you can tell that's been destroyed by the emerald ash borer. But uh, this is incredibly dense wood and we're gonna see what this will do with something much larger and we'll see what it does with this because this has some straight grain into it. And then we're gonna put it into this knotty piece of wood that I think would stop almost any knife but we'll see what happens. So first up, uh, the straight grain piece. Again, I'm gonna take a look and try to find a crack, and I'm gonna work with that crack. Uh, I like to work with wood instead of against it. Uh, this is another thing that my friend Donnie Brown is teaching me. And it's having difficulty going in that piece for sure. Let's go ahead and just cut off the tip of it. See what that does. Again, I'm gonna follow the grain here as best I can. 
Hey, one of the things that I can definitely point out is this hurts my freaking hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a glove and I'm gonna wrap it up. This is another thing you get with a good knife is a good handle. That's why I'm a big fan of a rounded handle so it doesn't hurt your hand and see if that helps because I'm not hitting that as hard as I could because it's hurt my hand. And, and it's, it's having a difficult time getting into that ash, mainly because I don't have a good crack to work with. Yeah, good lesson learned there. There we go. So I got the crack started, got it where I can get the blade all the way across and use leverage to bust on through. And that's sort of knotty itself, so it followed the grain of the knot and that's a good lesson right there. So it took a little bit of effort, but I got it through on the ash, which is again, pretty hard wood. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this knotty old piece now. Uh, again, sitting on there, we got some good cracks, but I think they're gonna lead right into the knot. So, uh, this leads directly into that knot. Let's see what happens though. You can see it's getting bent now. And it doesn't want to go in at all. But let's take it out to the edge and see what happens to it. We got a crack started right here and that'll very easily come out to the edge. Let's see what we can do with that. Please note the bend in the knife itself. Well, I can get it in there, but I'm having difficulty getting it on down in any further. There you go, it's bending up. So I think, given enough time, uh, I could get that split, but we've got a pretty good bend in it and I have some finer work I wanna see how this does, particularly trying to make some fire tender. Uh, and I don't wanna ruin it before then. So uh, let's just put this off to the side. I would use that in the fire anyway. I wouldn't try to split that at all. But uh, that gives us an idea of what's gonna happen to the knife. In my opinion, this is the same thing that's gonna to happen to a mora. Uh, this is not the best use of a mora or a case knife of this nature. And so just keep that in mind. These are, this is like an abuse test right here. So keep that in mind. So real quick, I'm gonna use my baton to try to get the bend beat out. This is taking advantage of the fact that we have this nice flat wood that we could use here for this purpose. But that gives you an idea of the hardiness of these blades for one. And let's just go see if it'll do some fine cutting. Keep in mind, I did not sharpen this. And so we're gonna see it in its raw form. So first thing, let's take a piece of this poplar um, that we used in a class before and just see if it works well for just skinning bark off. You know, it's just a simple thing, getting the bark off. What we've got here is a real high flat grind, which it's not gonna cut in real good and it's not sharp. So it's cre if we're creating tinder by rubbing the side, yeah, we've got something. But as far as a cutting tool, it's, it's basically just scratching it up more than anything. And then again, this is without it being sharpened at all. But let's use this thing a little bit wiser. Before, you'll notice I was working on the rounded side of this. This time, what I wanna do is take it off to the edge. I just split that piece in half. And you can see when I can get on the edge, I can actually cut good pieces off because I can get more on a sharper portion and so it's going to be useful. Now what I want to do is utilize this in a very different fashion and we'll see what we can do with it because I think we'll be able to put more pressure onto the wood and get some better cuts. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this uh, turkey tail, Termites versicolor mushroom off this log. Very useful, very useful fun guy. But what I want to do is take my knife, find a crack, and I'm going to beat it down in there with my baton. 
Then what I'm gonna do is use it in this fashion. And you'll note, I'm getting a lot of good little pieces using it in this fashion that I wasn't getting before. And that's simply because this is staying steady and I'm now utilizing this for pressure. Because again, to accent the point, this knife is dull as a dog biscuit. It's not gonna cut anything. But in this particular situation, I can still use it because it has edge. So think how much better this would be to develop some tinder for fire making. Man, I hope this video has helped you see that creativity is a very important part of developing your survival, your bushcraft, outdoor skills. Uh, that knife is a very poor choice. If you want a better choice, then check out my friends. I've got several knife makers. Bright Force Forge, he makes fantastic handmade tools. LT Wright, they make the tool that I carry with me almost on a daily basis. CRKT is my folder that I carry, and Water Tactile. These are all really good friends of mine. They make fantastic tools. Check them out. Uh, if you want help deciding what kind of knife that should be the best for you, then pick up my book, Ultimate Wilderness Gear. It comes out in July. I have a whole chapter dedicated to anything and everything that you need to know about knives, as well as we would love to have you join us for a class. Uh, all the instructors at Nature Line School are all about doing what we can to help people become better them, more skilled, more educated, more creative in what we do in survival and tracking and land navigation and all it is that we teach at Nature Line School. So check out our calendar and join us for a class because we like to come on, join in. Let's learn together.